All right, this video here goes out to anybody who's taken the pre-workout too late in the day and spent half their night looking at the ceiling as we talk about sleep, rest, relaxation, and all the functions found inside a sedative, this time on the Supplement Lab. All right, so the way that all this stuff works is you have different kinds of neurotransmitters. Now, we've talked about excitatory neurotransmitters before with adrenal. Those are usually including the catecholamines like adrenaline, dopamine, and norepinephrine. But this time, we're gonna talk about the inhibitory neurotransmitters, the ones that actually kind of do the opposite thing. Now, the most two predominant ones that you have in your body are GABA and L-glycine. Now, L-glycine is something that has been shown to reduce daytime fatigue and reduce daytime sleepiness, but it's not the number one player. The number one player is actually GABA, and GABA actually accounts for about 20% of the different neurons that are in your actual CNS, and they have different types of relationships. There's an antagonistic relationship where your anti-action of GABA or anti-action of any given receptor or the agonistic relationship where you promote those types of things. Now GABA and the GABA receptor actually has many different types of subunits and therefore combined a lot of things. Now, if you've ever consumed alcohol before and gotten a little bit intoxicated, you've felt activation of the GABA receptor. If you've ever taken a benzodiazepine, you've also felt that same sort of effect just in a little bit of a different way. Or if you've ever supplemented with GABA before, you've also felt the same kind of thing. It increases this, this heavier feeling. Suddenly the forces of gravity are more pronounced upon your body, or at least the perception of this. Now, there is a synergy with GABA itself and the amino acid L-theanine that's been pretty well studied, that it increases sleep duration, how long you sleep, but it also decreases sleep latency, how fast you go to sleep. Now. It does this through an antagonistic relationship, not of the GABA receptor, but of AMPA receptors and the NMDA receptor, which are typically excitatory receptors. So if you antagonize an excitatory receptor, you have more of an inhibitory type of response. And because of this, L-theanine is something that has been known to decrease the level of perceived stress in other studies. Now, we do have two other different amino acids that are in this formula. One is 5-hydroxytryptophan, the tryptophan derivative that is the amino acid precursor to serotonin, which makes you feel good. And L-dopa, which is the amino acid precursor to dopamine, which also makes you feel good. But what's interesting about L-dopa and supplementation in a pre-bedtime type scenario is that it has this secretagogue type of effect. Now, a secretagogue is something that promotes the release of another hormone by a, an exogenous substance. You take the exogenous substance and it stimulates the release of, in this particular case, growth hormone release hormone, which is something that is also accomplished by taking GABA in a pre-bedtime scenario. So those two guys work synergistically to increase nighttime growth hormone response. We do have two different types of plants that are in here. One is magnolia extract, which is standardized for 90% magnolol and nokiol. This has an antihistamine type of effect. And if you've ever taken a Benadryl, you realize that it's really easy to go to sleep on those. But it also coactivates the GABA receptor, so there's a synergy with GABA there. But it also antagonizes the NMDA receptors like theanine does. And there's also a synergy with the actual magnesium that's found in sedative because it's a cofactor for NMDA receptor binding. The second botanical we have in here is Corydalis yonhuso. It's standardized for tetrahydropalmitine, which is a known anxiolytic or anxiety reducing type substance. And it creates a hypnotic effect through the agonism of the dopamine receptor and the antagonism of the dopamine 2 receptor. So it creates that effect there. Now, the next thing, if anyone has taken any kind of sleep product, is not gonna be surprised to find melatonin here. Melatonin is something that is stimulated in the body or the release of it is stimulated through the lack of actual sunlight. And this is in contrast to vitamin D. You know, vitamin D levels will increase in response to sunlight. But the mechanism's kind of interesting, is your body no longer receives photons from the sun. The retina identifies this. It sends a signal to the suprachiasmic nucleus of your brain, which is also known as your bio biological clock, it sends another signal down to the super cervical ganglion or superior cervical ganglion, and this sends the signal up to the pineal gland where mel melatonin is actually made and released from. So this actually reaches its peak concentration between two and four o'clock in the morning, but exogenous supplementation of it will reach supra physiological levels more than would normally be found in the body. And what this does, it also decreases sleep latency, as I'd mentioned before, how fast you go to sleep, and it increases sleep duration and quality, also good things that we're looking for here. 
The last thing I'm gonna talk about is why the heck is choline in a sleep formula? It's not just choline by itself, but it's also there in combination with huperzine A. And these two things are tied together pretty well because huperzine A is something what is called a super, uh, acetylcholine esterase inhibitor. It's something that stops the neurotransmission from coming from the central nervous system to the muscle. And by blocking that action, it just completely shuts that off. And this is actually beneficial at night because whenever you are sleeping, you are going to go through several different stages of sleep. The REM stages of sleep, the non-REM stages of sleep, but in the REM stages of sleep, that is when the brain is most active and when acetylcholine levels are most needed. During the daytime, it's used for neuromuscular control, the mind-muscle connection, helping you balance and coordinate yourself. It's also for learning and memory during those times as well. But the two times that acetylcholine, ester or acetylcholine levels are highest are during waking hours and during dreams. Now, why is this actually happening? because sleep actually enhances memory. There have been studies that have shown that if you go and learn some new information and then you go take a nap, that your retention of that information is actually better than had you not taken a nap at all. And this is partly because of acetylcholine and what it does whenever your body's not moving. Because what its actual job is in the formation of memory during a subconscious episode or a nocturnal hour is that it takes this new information splits it all into fragments and moves it into different timelines to create these narratives, which may seem weird while you're dreaming, but it's a whole process that, that orients this new information and reconciles it with the old information that you've actually already got in your brain in some attempt at making sense of your reality in, at large. And this is what's called memory consolidation. In this sense, the combination of choline's and huperzine A in a nighttime formula is more of a nighttime nootropic, so it's also kind of nice that it actually helps you with your memory consolidation. So in summary, sedative, it promotes relaxation and rest, says so on the front of the bottle. It also helps reduce anxiety and stress. Um, it improves sleep latency and sleep duration. And it's something that, you know, helps synchronize your circadian rhythm and it helps you with uh, your memory consolidation. So once again, if you're someone who has a hard time falling asleep, wants to dream a little bit more maybe, or if you've just taken that pre-workout too late in the day, that is what sedatives is for.